What's up everybody, Dr. Good and back with Newton's final law, the law of gravitation. And it's in this video that I will tell you how you are attracted to every single person you have seen today. Think about them in your head. Your roommate, that guy across the hall, your little brother, you're attracted to all of them. Stay tuned and we'll figure out how. Okay, so Newton's law of gravitation. Every body in the universe attracts every other body. There you go. That's how you're attracted to everybody. Sorry, that was super corny, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe you laughed. Uh, everybody in the universe attracts every other body with a force directed along the line of centers for the two objects that is directly proportional to the product of the masses or inversely proportional to the separation between the two objects. Hold up. What? Let's translate that. Okay. Force equals the gravitational constant times the mass of Earth times the mass of the second body that you're wanting to figure out over r squared. Now, force in this case equals gravitational force. g equals the universal gravitational constant. M1 and M2 are just the masses of the first and the second body that you're wanting to calculate, usually the Earth and something else. And R squared is the distance between their centers of mass. Okay? Now let's simplify that even further. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that equation down. We're going to do a little bit of cross product elimination here and some solving for variables. So if we multiply both sides, or sorry, divide both sides by the mass one, that gives us g equals big G times m2 over r squared, in which case g equals acceleration due to gravity, because remember, force equals mass times acceleration. Now, if we multiply both sides by r squared, and then divide both sides by m2, we get the following. f equals r squared times g over m2. And because now we have a second equation that also equals f, we can set it equal to the first equation. And let's get rid of these cross products. And we get the resultant equation force equals mass times the gravitational constant, or F equals M times G. Now this should look very familiar to force equals mass times acceleration, and that's because it is. The gravitational constant is just the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so it's really the same thing, but with specific application to the force of gravity. So let's apply this to a problem in which we have a known quantity of mass and try to figure out how much gravitational force it produces. Okay, so the gravitational constant is 9.81 meters per second squared. And let's go ahead and draw a kettlebell. And, nah, 80 is too much. Let's make it 40 kilograms. So in this case, we have to multiply the mass of the kettlebell times the gravitational constant, and this gives us 392.4 Newtons. Yes, they named the unit after Sir Isaac Newton himself, who came up with these laws. So one Newton is actually equal to one kilogram per meter per second squared, or the amount of acceleration that gravity exerts on a single kilogram. Okay, so if we chart that out, the mass of this kettlebell is 40 kilograms, but the weight of the kettlebell is 392 newtons. Another measure of weight is the pound, or the pound force. And to convert newtons to pound forces, or pounds, we multiply it by 0.2248. So if we do that, then we get 88 pounds. So you can see the mass of this object is 40 kilograms, but the weight of it is 88 pounds, or in newtons, 392 newtons. 
So that is the difference between mass and weight. Mass never changes, it stays the same. You have the same mass on Earth as you do on the moon, as you do in space. But weight does change due to the change of gravitational constants. So if you're on Earth, you weigh a certain amount in pounds. But if you went to the moon, that certain amount of poundage that you weigh would change. Hey guys, thanks so much for sticking around to the end of the video. If you have questions, hit me up in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. If you've been getting anything out of these videos, if they've been helpful to you, go ahead and give them a thumbs up, subscribe. That's helpful to me as I continue to put out content to my students, but also to other people who want to learn about kinesiology, biomechanics, structural kinesiology, all of that good stuff. In the next video, we'll be talking about linear kinematics. So if you wanna keep learning about biomechanics, head over to this video. Otherwise, there's a ton of other biomechanics videos over here or on my channel, a whole range of kinesiology topics from anatomy to strength and conditioning, to sports science, biomechanics, you name it. I'll see you on the next video.